The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Amazing story that the Avat Chayim brings down, really showing people that live on a different level with this beautiful mindset, mentality, their life is a different life. The bitachon they have in Borei Olam, the hashkafa that they have, different level. You see where they're holding, it's unbelievable. And the way the story goes is that in the times of Rablevi Yitzchak Miberdichev, there was a certain man called Yecheskel. Yecheskel was a man, seemed like a simple man at the time, and he passed away. Okay? How many people are going to go to his levaya? All of a sudden, everyone sees the great rabbi himself is going. Rablevi Yitzchak Miberdichev is going to the levaya. His chasidim go, people see the great rabbi going, the whole entourage is going to the levaya. They don't know where the person really is. If they thought he was a simple person, but the rabbi is going, we're going to go to the Levaya. And sure enough, they go to the Levaya. And at the Levaya, the rabbi gets up to say, Divre has a eulogy for Yehezkel. And he says, Murav Rabotai, I want to share with you a story that happened. And the way the story goes is there was a man in this town, I won't say his name. He was once upon a time very rich, and unfortunately he hit rock bottom. And he was so embarrassed because people thought he was rich and he really wasn't. He didn't know what to do. So he decided he wants to take a loan. So he went to Yehezkel, the man that's Niftar, the deceased. The person that just passed away. He went to him and he asked him, could you please give me a loan? And he said, how much do you need? And he told him how much he needs. He said, sure. And he's about to give him the loan. And he says, I just want to get a witness. Because that's what you need when you're giving a loan. So the man says to him, please, Chatzkil, no witnesses. I'm scared. I don't want to get embarrassed, but trust me, I'm going to pay you back. He says, you know what? Hashem will be your guarantor. If you don't pay, then Hashem will take care of it. He says, great, Hashem's going to be the guarantor. Amazing. Gave him the money. Shalom al Yisrael. The time came to pay six months later. And the guy's a no show. Eight months Nothing. Till finally after 12 months, the guy comes back to Chatzkil's door, knocks on the door, and he says, Chatzkil, how you doing? I got the money that you lent me. Thank you so much. I had a hard time giving it back after six months. I'm really sorry. But I got it now, and here you go. You can have it. It's all yours. He looks at him, and he says, what are you talking about? He says, I, I took a loan from you one year ago. I never paid you back. I'm so sorry. I was supposed to pay you back after six months. I didn't have the money yet. But now I have it. Thank you so much. He says... You don't owe me anything. What are you talking about? I borrowed money from you. He says, you owe me nothing. What do you owe me nothing? Didn't we say that Hashem is your guarantor of here? Hashem paid me back in full. What are you talking about? Take the money. Hashem paid me back. Didn't we say after six months, you don't pay back Hashem is the guarantor? Hashem paid me back. Take the money. I'm not taking it. Take the money. I'm not taking it. I'm taking you to Beddin. Okay, take me to Beddin. <laughs> he takes Chatzkil to Beddin. And who is the Dayan? Rablevi Yitzhak Vibertenshev is one of the Dayanim. And he said, I never saw this. They're fighting that they don't owe each other. And he's saying, I do owe you. He's saying, you don't owe me. I never saw that. Usually, it's you owe me. No, you owe me. And you owe me. And I don't owe you. And here he's saying... I owe you. And you're saying, I don't? What? Something. In the end, he came to a compromise and he said, Would you like to give the money to Sedaka? And they both agreed to give the money to Sedaka. Shalom al Yisrael. And that was the story that he said, Bar Libaya. And then he says, I want to tell you a second story. And the way the second story goes is there was once a man walked into a Makolit, a small grocery store. And he buys a few items, puts his hand in his pocket, takes it out. And as he's paying the teller, he didn't realize when he took his hand out of the pocket, 200 rubles fell out of his pocket onto the floor. And he's paying. He walks out of the store. And in the meantime, a man saw the money fall out of his pocket, comes, takes the 200 rubles, and claims it for himself. He does not do the mitzvah of Hashavat Avida. A few minutes later, the man that lost the 200 rubles, he runs back into the store. He's all nervous. Did anybody find my money? Did anybody find my money? So Rav Chatzkil was in the store. And he goes to the man on the side. 
And he didn't know exactly how much he lost, but he pretended like it was him that found the money. And to know what to give, he asked him, could you please tell me how much you lost? I have to make sure that I found your money. I can't just give you, you have to have a siman. You want to tell me how much you lost? He said, I lost 200 ruble, and it looks like this, and it was this way. He says, great, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I have that. I have it. He goes to the side, prepares the flu, he gives it to him. He says, this is yours. Wow, thank you so much. Unbelievable. The guy that really found the 200 ruble, he was on the side. He saw the whole thing happen. He couldn't believe it. He's like, what? He knows it's okay. He knows it's in his pocket. And the other one that's saying, you found it. Oh, this guy is Sadiq Nistar. He felt so guilty. So after a while, he went to Khatskil's house and he knocked on the door. And he said, you're Tzaddik. What you did was unbelievable. Here's the money. He said, what are you talking about? The guy came into the store. He dropped 200 rubles. He was looking for it. I know where it was. I'm the one that found it. And you came out of nowhere. I left field. And you're the one that said that you found it. Impossible. I know. And you know that you didn't find anything. I found it. And you just took it out of your own pocket. I can't do it. Here. Here's the 200 rubles. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. I owe you money. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I'm taking the bedding. And for the second time, he's being taken to bedding. And Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Mibardichev again, he couldn't believe it. What a Sadiq. Fighting that he's not old? Unbelievable. And they come to a compromise, they'll give the money to Tzedakah. And then he says at the Levaya, third story. And he says there was once a young couple. And the young couple, unfortunately the husband wasn't able to make ends meet. So he had to depart, take a trip overseas. It could take a few months, if not a year or two. And he's going to have to leave his wife. So he told his wife, I'm sorry, I have to leave. But you can imagine her reaction. You're leaving? How is she supposed to survive? How is she going to live? You're leaving for two years? He's going to come back to, to, to home. How is she going to live for two years? Where's the part of that side going to come from? So he says to her, listen, I'm leaving two years. I'll be back. And in regards to the money, I have it all figured out. Every Sunday, go to the neighbor across the street, Yecheskel. He owes me a large sum of money. So I already worked it out with him that every Sunday you're going to go to his house. And he's going to give you two rubles. And he's going to take it off of the greater number that, I, that he owes me. And then when I come back, we'll uh, do the math. We'll see really what's left and uh, he'll pay me the rest. So you already have credit by him. He owes me money. Every Sunday, go to him. He'll give you two rubles. Wow, okay, great idea. Thank you so much. See you later. Adios. Au revoir. Turalu. He goes to the shores. And the first Sunday comes. And she goes to Chatzkel's house. She knocks on the door. And she's expecting two rubles. He opens. How can I help you? Hi, my... Um, you know, uh, she starts explaining the whole story. Her husband just told her that... She could come here and pick up the two rubles. So you have the two rubles? Excuse me? Yeah, you know the money that you owe my husband? She said, he said that you could just give it to me every week, just two rubles and take it off the account. He had no idea what you're talking about. And he hopped, this was a sketch. Her husband never lent him money or gave him money. And it was just a way to ditch town and not feel guilty. And the guy's thinking after the first Sunday, that's it, she's going to leave him. But at least he was able to leave in peace in the meantime, probably. And now she's by the guys, by my Hatzkel's house. And he picked up on the whole story. He says, oh, that's your husband? Of course, no problem. Two rubles, right, Sunday, great. Do you mind if I give you four rubles today? I guess, I guess just make sure you make a note of it when he comes back, you know, work it out. But, but I guess, why not? Okay. He gives her four rubles. For a year, 50 weeks, four rubles. Another year, 50 weeks, four rubles. After two years, 100 weeks, 400 rubles later. Her husband comes back. And he's thinking his wife is probably dead. She probably zamma. She probably like thin. She probably a hazita that eat it two years. She's not going to let her back into the house. The house is probably falling apart. And then when he gets to the house, he sees, well, it doesn't look so bad. Quietly knocks on the door, goes inside. Shh. Not bad. Fiflus, good. 
He walks inside. He sees his wife sitting in, in the living room. She looks healthy as could be. Face is shining. Hello? Ah, you made it! Wow, great to be home! She said, great to have you here! He was confused. like, what? How's it going? Unbelievable. You were missed. Baruch Abba, good to have you back. He was expecting swings and bats. He wasn't, they didn't know what she's going to do to him. What? what, what? So, so, so how, how'd you make it? How'd you live? She said, what do you mean? You told me every week, go across the street, and he's going to give me two rubles. The guy's like, what? He, he, he actually, he's thinking he actually gave two rubles? All right. Of course, of course the, the two rubles, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, good. Everything's good. It worked out? Yeah. But by the way, when you go to him and you speak to him, just realize he gave me four rubles in the end, so just deduct really accordingly and don't think it was two. It was four rubles. Oh, okay, I'll make you note of that. I'll, I'll do the math again. And uh, four, okay, okay. Good to know. Four, four rubles. He goes across the street, knocks on the guy's door. Chatzkel opens up. And he gives him this bear hug. You saved my life. You saved my wife. You saved my marriage. Thank you so much. You don't know what you did for me. Because what are you talking about? Hello? My wife was coming for the past two years. Every Sunday, he gave her four rubles. He said, I'm giving you the money right now. Check, cash, certified, whatever you want. I'm giving them food to yours. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. You gave my wife every single week four rubles. I owe you 400 rubles. He says, no, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yeah? I'm taking you to Beddin. And for the third time, he goes in front of Beddin. Levi Yitzhak and Berdichev cannot believe what's unfolding again in front of his eyes. And again, they come to a compromise. They'll give the money to Sedaka. And at the Levaya, he said, this is the Sadiq that passed away. And they all started crying and crying over the Sadiq that he was that they practically didn't even recognize. Anche emuna avadu. The people that have emuna, the people that have bitachon, the people that understand who really pays the bills, who's really the provider, who's the one that's paying everything to work on our, our, our emuna, to work on our bitachon. What is the good we have to be Yehudim, to take our beautiful mitzvot and to cherish them. The mitzvah of Shemitat Kesafim teaches us this unbelievable lesson to work on our bitachon to open our hands and to remember always Ure Olam is the one that gives and the only one that gives. He is the one that gives every single one of us all of the Beracha that we ever had, that we have, and that we will ever have. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org